this is so dope. I was yeah. watching the uh, the lyric video mm -hmm. for Signs, awesome. and I saw the uh, the bunny, and I was like, this is so like I think this is adorable. <laughs> I thought that was adorable. Just having the uh, yeah. just having the uh, the bunny being yeah. all stitched together yeah. and stuff like that. Wow, so that's the kind of meaning behind it. Yeah, that's so legit. What made you think of doing something like that? Just the innocence and stuff like that. I, do you know what? It just come to me, literally. Like I was sitting there thinking about like, what do you do? And I was trying to play around with things and putting myself in the pictures, your artwork, which mm -hmm. is, you know, which is quite a normal thing to do in music. And then I just thought I wanted something like a symbol to like to like show the journey that I've been on from like my past that I've gone through as a child and it came through. And I kind of feel like I found myself like two years ago. Really? That's, that's when I kind of fell apart. Uh -huh. But that's kind of when I then put myself back together again in a healthy dealt with everything and fucking stitched myself you, you, you right stitched up. yourself up. What happened? <laughs> what ha I want to know what happened two years ago. I basically had a breakdown. Really? Yeah, I basically, I came out about two and a half years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and my whole life I'd kind of been in denial about it because I'd gone through, I'd, I grew up in such an abusive household. I'm someone who's got through um, sexual abuse and mental abuse, emotional abuse, the whole lot, physical mm -hmm. abuse. And I'd never really spoken about it. I just got my head down, got myself out of my small town where I was from, um, moved to London when I was 15 to go to dance school. Um, so I found solace in arts, basically. So I spent my whole life like just going to work because I felt like work was my identity because I didn't know who I was without that. Mm -hmm. um, so then when I finally moved to LA to do music... Um, and what, what age was that? Fuck. Um, must have been like three or four years ago now. So you're so brand, like brand new. Yeah, in a sense, yeah. What'd you say? That sounds about right, yeah. yeah. Three, three, four years? Yeah. So, and I kind of, again, I was putting out, I don't know if you heard some of my music before, that I put out before this e, um, this e, this body of work now, but it's very dark, mysterious. Very main emo. characters. Emo. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I, I used to only wear black, mm -hmm. like no joke. And like, I had this like aura around me where people wouldn't necessarily ask me questions because I was scared. So I didn't have any friends. I kept everyone at a distance. And I was like, manically depressed. Really? I was, uh, yeah, I was suicidal, like, so much. And it just got to a point where I couldn't hold it together anymore. Mm -hmm. And my manager, Sarah, she approached me at one point and was talking about being vulnerable and being authentic with your audience and things like that. And then she took me to see this psychologist and literally, for the first time in my life, I opened everything up and everything just came out. And then that's when I decided to come out and you know, I've said before, like you know, people think you come out and it's all rainbows and unicorns, but it's not for a lot of people. It's uh, a start of a healing process, a start of self-acceptance, self-love, mm -hmm. and going on a journey. And it was like that happened. The guy that I was seeing then left me, right. which I put all my um, my happiness into him. He was like my rock. Right. Do you know what I mean? So when that disappeared, I literally broke. It was like the straw that broke the camel's back. Were you, sad. like, super offended when they were like, all right, maybe you need to speak to a therapist and uh, change up your music and stuff like that? Because, you know, like how you say, you've been doing it for, you know, yeah. since 15, 12, yeah. Yeah. you know, and this um, is your art. I wasn't, because I think it's about how someone approaches you. When you know someone's approaching you, like, I'm very close with Sarah, mm -hmm. um, my manager. I'm, I'm, I've worked with her for years, and she knows me very well. So when some, I think when someone comes to you from a place of love, it's very hard to be angry, especially when you know what they're saying is true, you know? Because um, she was never like, are you gay? Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's one of the worst things you could say to someone who's in the closet or whatever. Um, but she was like, she just started to sort of like talking around it, you know, and sort of gradually coming in on it very gently, very, you know, um, in such a caring way that I was kind of breaking at that point anyway. So I couldn't hold it in. And at that point, I was kind of like, fuck, sorry, what can I do? Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, like, she said she'd come with me, and we went to see this woman, and it's like someone opened the floodgates. Was it? Was it? Did, did like a switch just turn it, on? Literally, like from never telling people some of the things I'd gone through and have done over that, um, over the course of my um, life, I'm like, damn, that come out easy. Because you know what I mean? Like sometimes it's so easy when you know you're in a safe space and this person you don't know. It's not judging you. It's not judging you. Right. You know it's safe there. No one's going to find out about mm -hmm. it. They ask and they're just like, oh, so what's going on? And then you're just and like, then you just get, right, I was about to say, you probably just get diarrhea <laughs> yeah, of the mouth and just, just start like, talking. And I was like, holy shit. Like, <laughs> oh my God, I can't stop talking. Right. And then everything just came out. And I felt this like weight lifted off me in a sense. But then I had to then, when I then was coming out, I had to come out to my record label, I had to come out to my 
PR team, I had to come out to my management, the rest of my management team. Mm -hmm. I then started telling all my other friends. Right. It was like, you have to keep coming out, keep coming out, keep coming out, keep coming out. And like I said, it's the start of a healing process. So it was so hard. I was a wreck for like months. And again, I went back into that depression. I, um, you did? Yeah, like really badly. I was walking How around. How come? The, I think because I was scared of losing the person I was, well, I was with at the time, mm -hmm. because like I said, I put all my happiness onto them and you have to find it in here. You know, if you put it on you and you decide to leave, my happiness is gone, Right. you know? And that, I was so terrified of losing that because that was the only stable thing I had because I felt like my career was going tits up. I, the music wasn't connecting as much. I thought the label were gonna drop me. Because you're not being authentic to your true authentic I just thought, I, I thought I'd ruined my chance, right. to be honest with you. And then, like I said, when he, when he I, I was actually at iHeart in New York, and I'd done the whole performance there in their performance space, which was amazing, and I just felt so hollow. And I was there on stage pretending that I was happy, pretending that I was having a great time, and actually I wasn't. I was completely opposite, and I left um, iHeart, and I remember walking through New York for like, what felt like days almost, just almost just like numb. There was no noise around me. I felt this like tranquility kind of come over me, and that's kind of where I was like, you know what, like, I don't want to be here. Like, I'm gonna go back to my hotel, and I literally was at that point. Really? Really, yeah. After yeah. a performance, everything looks like it's going good, and you came to that conclusion. That's the thing, I feel like in this day we're in right, this, this time we're in right now, we're all so, like, trying to create, curate our own life. We're trying to cur curate our perfect life to everyone on our social medias. We don't sit and post us crying our eyes out. We don't sit and post that I'm having a shit day. You know, it's all about, I'm having a great day. I'm looking great. Look at me, I'm on a beach. Mm -hmm. Look at me, I'm so happy, my career's going so well. But actually, most people, and probably more people than not, don't feel like that all the time. That's why I feel like social media is almost to detriment to people sometimes. Yeah. Because it's it's a false reality. You know what I'm saying? Like people liking your pictures. And I feel like sometimes people take that to heart. Like no one likes your pictures. They don't think about the new algorithm that's out there and no one has seen the picture. They think, oh mm. my gosh, nobody likes me. So they're not liking the picture, which can yeah. draw someone into a depression. Well, it's because it's like a drug. Right. We're addicted to likes. We're a generation that's addicted to likes. Mm -hmm. You know, we need that. When we get a like on our Instagram, it like releases like things in your mind, mm -hmm. you know, that makes you feel good. And I think that um, you're right. It's just like, we, we, we're all doing it, we're all, myself included. And I just got to that point for me when I released Beautiful World video, because I kind of vlogged everything I went through. I thought, okay, I'm not a very nice crier to look at, but I thought, <laughs> stuff it. Let me just put it out there, yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think it's about time people, don't just tell me you're going through something. Show me, because if I'm that person who's in the arse end of nowhere and I don't have someone to talk to and I don't have a family that wants to support me or is there for me or I'm getting beaten or anything like that or bullied, if I'm going on social media and social media is my only connection to the outside world, if you don't have someone to relate to, like, no wonder why there's such record rates of suicide in the youth. Mm -hmm. No wonder why so many men a suicidal and committing suicide. I mean, I think that numbers are crazy at the moment. I think it's more men than women. I was reading some the other day, and it's like, because no one's speaking about it. And I think if we start talking about it, it then hopefully becomes a normal conversation. Right. If I can show you what I've done, and I'm no different from you, and I'm no different from you or anyone else, if I can do it, or I can show you what I've done, hopefully, just fingers crossed, if it can help one person to go and get the same kind of help, and not live the life that I lived for so long. Right. You know, I think that's a. Uh, I think that's what I kind of want to do, as well as my music. Absolutely. Bring something to it. You know. Is, does it take you back when people say like they they've listened to a song and how it helped them through something? Yeah. Like, the, is that what you're going for, or is it just like I'm sharing my struggles? Hopefully, you can get something out of the music. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, I I'm sharing my struggle because I want to get it out there and I want to show people that it's okay. Like, with, I was bi diagnosed with bipolar, mm -hmm. and there's such a stigma around mental health right. and mental illness. I feel like we need to talk more about it, because yeah. it's more common than what people think. So common. So many of us go through mm -hmm. depressed states. So many of us know people that are affected by depression, and so many people, like I said, suffer in silence, and they don't have to. Right. 
and for me, when I started speaking about, I got the help that I needed. Like I said, it was this weight lifted off my shoulders. I understood what I had. I educated myself on what I had. I then learned what my triggers were. I then understood when I'm going into an episode that I am going to come through the other side. You know, so when people can, when people see my video, for example, or listen to the lyrics in my songs, I hope that they can connect to it. I want them to connect to it. I want them to realise that no matter where they are on this earth, they are not alone, and there is ways to get through this you and you have to just we have to like try and find that and put it out there like put numbers up put information up right. talk about it do you feel like uh music is a form of therapy oh 100 percent. i remember like chris aguilera's album stripped you know it right mm -hmm. that was like a massive part of my life growing up like I, re I really lost myself in that album and alicia keys songs in a minor you know them them sort of songs really helped me um, so I know, and, and that sounds cliche, but like, no, that, we all I say, feel, right. you know, that music is universal and music is healing. Mm -hmm. how, many time, how many times have you listened to a song that takes you back somewhere? Absolutely. And I, you know what's funny? I can listen to a song. I can also smell something. And it will oh, take, really? Yeah, I, and, and I feel like it will take me back to, you know, the first time I've smelled that scent and yeah. stuff like that, which is really so interesting. So it's really powerful. And I think that, you know, music has the power to bring us together. You know, it's not going to happen overnight, and right. you're not gonna, it's not going to happen for everyone. But I believe that if you've got a platform and you're taking something, I think you should give something back. I want to talk about a line um, mm -hmm. that you sung in the song Signs, which I thought was super powerful. Mm -hmm. And I feel like everybody can definitely relate to this. It says, California is sunny, but it keeps raining in my head. Mm -hmm. I, th I think that's like, wow. Yeah, that was literally like I felt when I was going because this music I wrote when I was going through my breakdown and trying to figure things out. I was in 12-step program. I was going to see a psychiatrist, psychologist, you name it, I was doing it. And I felt like, like I said, to people on my Instagram, they're going to look at Leon's living in California. Oh my God, the weather's amazing. There's palm trees and, you know, like the, the Hollywood and the stars, the fame or whatever. And I'm like, you think it's sunny, you know, and it is sunny. But what you don't know is that in here, it's, it's not, it's raining, it's dark. I'm not happy. Can I make the, assump uh, the uh, assumption? So what do you do when you get tweets like this? Hi, Leon, just watch the video for Beautiful World again. And uh, to tell you that you are a beautiful, talent, amazing person. And the song and the video is an inspiration to so many people who feel the same way. You're awesome. That makes me feel like I'm doing something right. That makes me feel like I've touched someone somewhere. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe given them, like they've said themselves, uh, inspired them, you know, or connected with them because I think that music should be more than just music. It's, just, it's stories, it's experiences, you know, it's just put with music and melodies. I think it's really interesting how you and I could just be going through our lives and, you know, you writing a song about it and how it can inspire someone else to, you know, keep going or keep chugging along. Because we're not that different. Right. We're not that different. I bet there's things that you've gone through in your life that we could sit and have a conversation and be like, you know what, I know, I, I know what you're saying. I've been through something similar, or I've been there, or you know, I know someone that's been there. And it's just because no one talks about it. Because if I go to you, hey, how are you? You're gonna be like, oh, I'm fine. Fine, but are you fine? Yeah. Or am I even asking because I really want to know? Right. Or am I asking just, I want you to say I'm fine because I don't really want to get into it with you because it makes people feel awkward. Yeah, you know, it's, people don't know what they don't know what to do. When I, says, sometimes no, I'm when I'm with uh, friends, like true friends, and I know that they're having, I'm, how are you really? Like, how are you feeling really? Don't just give me fine. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, how are you really feeling? Yeah, I feel like sometimes you got to do that to check on friends. You know right? Because I mean? you never know. You never know. Well, I always crack a joke. Like when you go to these events and stuff, and everyone's like, "Hi, how are you? I haven't seen you for so long." And you know, deep down, they don't want to know. But I really sometimes feel like going. You know what? I feel like shit. And I've had a fucking terrible, sorry. <laughs> and I've had a terrible week. And you know what? I, I, I don't want to be like in this event. And I, yeah, I'm just pissed. I don't, I don't care at the moment. I their their mouth will probably just drop and be like, <laughs> what? what? What is going on? What are you saying? <laughs> exactly. But I think people should check in with your friends because everyone's shocked when someone, when the unfortunate event of suicide happens, everyone always goes, oh my God, but I never saw it coming. Oh or he was God, in such a good so mood. Yeah. Right. And you're like, but have you ever, did you ever seriously ask that person if they're okay? Like, did you really ever ask? take time? Right. Because I think if you do pay attention to people, there are signs there, you know? And 
that's when you have to like, you know, you can't do it to everyone naturally. You know, there's millions of people in this world. You can't go around trying to solve everyone's problems. Right. But your close people are to you, you should look out for them. You should look out for each other and just check in and really check in. Totally. All right, so let's switch gears a little bit. I have a okay. couple of would you rather questions. Okay. I want to see where your head is <gasps> okay. on these. Uh, so would you rather continue with your life or restart it? Continue. Continue. Yeah, 100%. Because I feel like, you know what? What you go through and what's happened makes you. And I'm good where I'm at. And I don't have no regrets. No, re uh, no regrets. That's a great answer. Mm. I'm not, maybe if I was a teenager, I'd be like, no, let's restart this. Because you know, I mean, maybe I'd restart it and be like one of them genius ideas. Or I'd, I'd start yeah, Apple yeah. and I'd restart there and yeah. I'd become some multi billionaire. So, yeah, I'd like to take some ideas back and maybe I'd restart them. But, but other than that, you're good. If I couldn't do that, yeah. Or I'd like write the lotto, the Euro millions or right. the, the lottery down and like become a billionaire overnight, then yeah, because then I can like help people and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah. All right. So, would you rather speak all languages or be able to speak to animals? Speak to animals. I think oh, I would do that too. I love animals. I've just got a dog like four months ago. Really? Yeah, and it's like my child. How's that been? Amazing. So if I could speak to animals, because I also like, I, I, I'm trying to go green. I'm trying to cut back on the meat that I'm eating. Mm -hmm. And I feel like we need to protect this earth. And I just, I just think it'd be amazing if animals could sit and say to you, hey, what's up? Yeah. Like, you know. Or I mean, where have you been? I've been waiting all day. Or what the fuck are you <laughs> yeah, doing to me? Yeah, yeah. Like, what are you doing? Why are you killing me? Why I've, are you torturing me? Why are you doing all this stuff, you know, so I'll definitely talk to animals. That's amazing. All right, so would you rather give up your love life or work life? Oh, that's a tough one because I'm addicted to work. I love to work. I feel like it's, everybody who's in this business. It's my passion, yeah. yeah. You know what? I'm going to say I would give up my work. And the reason I would say I would give up my work because your work is not going to hug you at night when you're asleep. Uh -huh. You know, you could have everything in this world, but if you don't have, but I believe that the reason why we are truly here is to connect with each other. Mm -hmm. And if you don't connect with people, I don't think you've lived life. Totally, 100%. Connecting don't pay the bills though. <laughs> Which, <laughs> <laughs> Just don't pay them and go on the run. Go on the run like Thelma and Louise with your lover. So Absolutely. you ain't gotta pay them bills. You ain't gotta pay them bills. That's so funny. Okay, so would you rather read minds or accu accurately predict the future? Read minds. Because I think there's something quite, I used to be terrified of the future and like where I was gonna end up. But now Ooh, I'm- Anxiety. Yeah, but now I'm like, I live, I try and I try and do the whole mindfulness thing. Mm -hmm. And I try and just be here in the moment. So I try not to even look past next week. So I'm like, whatever, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen and I can't change that. I don't wanna look past next hour. You know, right? Right. So I think I'd rather read people's minds. Totally. Again, because I've come for them lottery numbers or something. I would do. I would read someone's mind. Someone's gonna make this genius idea. But like, you know, get, get, in get some bag. of that money. Yeah, get some All right, here we go. Dream collaboration. Oh, it would have been Prince, but he's dead. Oh, I know. That would have been amazing. Damn. Um, Amy Winehouse, but again, she's dead. Um, so going I've got here. a thing with dead people, apparently. <laughs> um, I would love to collaborate with someone like Calvin Harris. I'd love to do an EDM track. I think that'd be really fun. I, I love, love EDM. To, do Kanye West. Mm -hmm. I think I think he's so. I love his creativity. And I love his passion. You might, and not everyone might agree with what he says, but at least the guys. I know there's someone in this room that is just like so happy that you. Oh, right. I was like. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think I think you know what he's got passion, and Kanye, you can't kick right. someone for their passion. Absolutely, one hundred percent. Where do you see yourself as an artist in ten years? I have no idea because I'm not even thinking that far ahead. Lord. Good. Damn, imagine that, 10 years, oh, I'll be old. I feel like, real. I don't want to get old. I'll be down Beverly Hills, like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even ashamed to admit, oh, nip tuck, you name it. Yeah, 100%. Get a little face pull Oh, back. yeah. That's hilarious. <laughs> so, uh, what's your favorite thing to do when you're not working? I mean, I do all the time. I love fitness. You do? Yeah, I'm really into my fitness, heavily, but also because for my mental health. Mm. Like, I, have to, I work out literally almost every day for about an hour and a half because I, I have to be, I have to be on it because I don't want it. If I start straying, right. you know, it's just not good for me. So I really have to work at trying to stay healthy, active, healthy in there and yeah. That's so. really, that's, that's amazing how that's, you know, something that keeps you on track. 100% like, you know, some people don't take pills and stuff. I mean, I take a lot of pills. I'm like a freaking pharmacy. 
Um, but if you don't do that, like, do go and do like. <laughs> yeah, far as I'm sitting, I'm sitting I'm here talking to a drugstore. I'm basically <laughs> CVS. You know, I'm, keep, I'm keeping CVS in business. Listen, whatever um, you need to do to keep you in, you know, in check. Yeah, but I think some everyone can go out and exercise if they're feeling a bit down because that's a natural endorphins that mm-hmm. release. And if you just go for a walk. If you go for a hike, I feel so much better when I go for a hike. Just looking out, the sun's setting. A walk feels really good. Walk on. Right, yeah. absolutely. Um, what's your favorite thing about performing? Just losing myself. That's when I, I love performing. I love performing so much. I've always performed as a dancer, as a singer. I just, I just feel like I just forget everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, if you can say one thing to everybody that supports you, what would it be? I love you and thank you so much. Dude, this was amazing, actually. (laughs)